Ohana, the musical family of Kapena. And uh, we are blessed to be with you on this beautiful Mele Kalikimaka celebration. And we're going to open up with a lovely song right up here. Let's do this, Kalena.
All right. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes, Lord. Hey, want to welcome all of you here this morning to our online service. We pray that uh, this time together will be a powerful time. Want to wel also welcome our family uh, back from the mainland. We got a bunch of people that are home for the Christmas break. So aloha, welcome. Thanks for joining us here this morning. And we pray that God will bless all of you here this morning with the word of God, the spirit of God. So in this season, we can be the people of God and be like salt that would add flavor and favor to the people in the place that we live in. So aloha, welcome. We're going to continue to enjoy this time here this morning with Kelly Boy and Leolani this morning. But first of all, I want to pray for all of you as we get started. want to pray God's blessings upon you. And we're going to worship Jesus as we um we're going to go back 2000 years ago and just imagine what it was like during that night when jesus was born and we're going to worship him in spirit and truth but at this time i just want to pray god's blessing as we gather together as god's ohana to draw close to him and draw close to each other so with that said epulikako let us pray Father, we thank you, Lord God. We say, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes, Lord. And Lord, we want to worship you today. We want to worship you this morning. We pray the Christmas spirit will be upon and within everybody here this morning. Your power will be within them. Your promises will just be evident upon their life. But more importantly, Emmanuel, God with us, your presence be with us this morning. So, Lord God, we just pray. Bless everyone out there. Bless those who are sick, those who are struggling, those who are hurting. We pray that you give them hope to cope, hope to float this morning that can be found in the person and the purpose of Jesus Christ. And, Lord, we worship you. We worship you with our hearts, our time, our talent, our treasures. We just pray for every family out there. Bless them, Lord God, as we worship you. Lord God, we pray for, um, for that our finances. Lord God, you bless our finances. And, and as we worship you and as people brought gifts to our Lord Jesus Christ, that we continue to worship you with our tithes and offerings as well. And even though if we're doing it online, that we'll be able to do that because of the technology at hand that there's a safe and secure way that we can give gifts to you this morning. But more importantly, Lord God, it's our faith. I pray that you supersize our faith this morning because apart from that, we can do nothing. It's impossible to please you without faith. So Lord God, supersize our faith this morning as we worship you, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We pray all these things. In your name we pray, and God's people said, Amen. Hey, people, let's worship Jesus this morning with this song by Capena, O Holy Night. The stars are brightly shining is the night of our dear Savior's birth. Long lay the world in sin and terror pied till he appeared. The world felt it. Oh, 
your baby boy would one day walk on water Mary did you know that your baby boy would save our sons and daughters did you know that your baby boy has come to make you new this shouted you 
boy and Leolani and we told you that we're going to bring you stories of hope let's be real it's dark out there it's depressing and we're talking about families families from Kauai to Kau'u from Hanalei to Hilo that's struggling during this time and um, we asked you folks to come to be able to share with all of our Ohana out there Amen. watching uh, can, what, what kind of stories can you bring of hope? Because you guys have been through a lot this year uh, as a family and as a group. And what do you want to share with all the families out there that's watching us tonight? Praise the Lord, Pastor Allen. You know, um, many years ago, I did a, um, a show with um, Pastor Wayne Cadero. It was called The Holiday Blues. And, um, you know, back in those days, um, our family was young. You know, I... I my dad never got to meet my kids or see them perform. He, he, he just, he, he helped me along in my career as a, as a young, you know, developing me. And, and he would have been so proud, you know, of, of his children. And, and dad would make Christmas real special, you know, for us. You know, um, we had highs and we had lows. We had times when we was on food stamps. We had times when he had one job and he was working, you know. And, but he would always make that, you know, so around Christmas time, um, I would go into this depression. You know, I would go into heavy depression. It was not the happiest time in the world for me during those times. It was the saddest time in, in life for me. You know, especially Christmas. And, and, and you ask my wife, I mean, she would go to church and I would go sit down on his grave at the graveyard and go cry and, you know, feel sorry. And, and, and you know something? Um, I tell you, the only hope we have is in Jesus, is in God. You know, God can show you... Uh, one new better future and and take you you know we we all go through these trials and tribulations in life but god takes you from glory to glory you know and um uh, he turned that that time when it was depression and it was it was sad times into joy today man i sit around man i got 
my grandkids opening up presents and we go to church and we serve Jesus first because he's the reason for the season, you know, he's the reason why we exist, you know. So I go to church now and then on after church, we come home, they open up presents and I see the joy. And, and I think of that good time that I had with my dad, but that was that season. You know, we're in a different season and, and you can arise from that, but you cannot arise from it. Jesus can lift you out of that. Wow. You know, the Lord can lift you into, into new, you know, into new, uh, jo with new joy and new beginnings. And, 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 and it's all new. You know, when you're in Christ, every day you wake up with the choice that you're going to make. Is my, is my day going to be one junky day or is this going to be one? You know what I mean? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to choose Jesus and I'm going to choose to walk, you know, his road. Every day you make a choice. Pastor Cal Chenin told me that. Pastor Cal said, you know what, Kelly boy, you come over here, you get saved, you get, you feel Jesus lift that burden. And then three weeks later, the thing old already. You know, it's like it's old news. You know what I mean? He said, every day you have to wake up and make that choice. Wow. That's what's, uh, uh, so that's what I'm, you know, I carry that with me now, you know? Yeah. Well, you know what, what I love before you share, Leo, what I love is your transparency. Because, you know, you guys are heroes. You know, we look up to you guys as entertainers. You guys inspire us at luau's, weddings, and, and bring so much hope and joy. But I love the fact that you guys are being real and transparent. And, and that's why we're doing this. We're doing this because we want you to know that you may look at uh, people out there think they got it together. But the fact of the matter that we're human beings, we all got issues, we all got Amen. hurts, habits, and hang-ups, and, if, if, and still get chance. Still but get it's, chance. it's in Jesus. You want to respond and share? Yeah. Um, this man is, we've been married for 33, 33 years. years. Hey, um, last week. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank, right? you. Guys, Thank you. Just celebrate. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank November you. 21st. We yeah. also got married three times. That was our choice. <laughs> uh, you know, we got married three times, the first time in a church, the second time because we uh, didn't we didn't accept Christ till after we got married. So when we got married the second time, it was because we were both born again believers of the Lord. And the third time uh, was in Israel at the at the church, the wedding at Cana was in Cana. Mm -hmm. So I feel like it's pa -a -pa -a -pa, like you. My father-in-law, who was yeah, our pastor, was, he said, eh. <laughs> That's it. No more marriages. Okay, <laughs> you guys never gonna leave each other again. So you know, praise the Lord. <laughs> but um, we've we've been married for that long, and so we've had our share of ups and downs. But I just thank the Lord that um, I was reading Isaiah nine six this morning, where it says, "And unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given." And um, the government uh, yeah. shall be on his shoulder, and his name shall be Wonderful Counselor, M Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. And this year, we've needed peace because that was one thing that this world didn't have. There was anxiety. There was depression. There was fear. There was everything but peace. And if we're going to be anchored in anything this year that's going to help us in our marriage and our families, I've heard someone say, um, if you had a good marriage, it would get better in this year. If you had a bad marriage, it would get worse. And I think we were all four things this year, but you know, God was, God was cleaning up some stuff, but you know, we've never had time to work on ourselves, but because of this year, like we were allowed time, you know, that's such a, everybody would say, Oh, if I had time, I would do this. You know, guess what we were afforded this year? The time. one commodity, time, you know. And so we had time to work on ourselves. We had time to work on our relationship with God. And we had time to work on um, our family. And so um, I, I told my girlfriend the other day, I said, I feel like this is my second husband <laughs> because he's a new creature. Like he's, wow. he's been made brand new this year um, after he gave up the anger, like, like gave it up and said, I'm no longer going to be under that bondage because you know that was passed down from generation to generation that anger and that you know that kind of control and you know it just kind of took over and we never spoke about it in public we just put on the smiling faces in front of the camera and in front of the people but behind us there was a whole other life going on but ever since he's he's given that up and just let the lord take full reign and control over his life we've had a peace in our home that is that is my Christmas gift this year. I don't need Amen. anything more to see my husband delivered and free. You guys don't even know, like my children, 
me um we just we're, we're so happy so happy birthday honey it's his yep. birthday happy today birthday, and jesus. happy birthday Ooh. jesus and we're just so happy to be here well it's it's amazing it's just i'm i'm lost for words and so encouraged by what god is doing in your families and you know the thing for you folks out there watching we're not as young as we think we are and we don't have as much time as we think we do no it goes by fast, Pastor Allen. You know, and, and one thing that we, some people do is we take life for granted. We take our job for granted. And we even take family for granted. Amen. And that's one gift. And that's one gift that we should cherish and do everything that we can to protect. And mm -hmm. thank you so, so much for sharing. So a couple of takeaways I got from you guys tonight is um, eat together as one family. Mm. Yeah. Turn off the TV. <laughs> Never mind football. Put family first. Amen. Football can come out. But eat, sing together, um, fellowship together, and put your hope in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. And that's the takeaway that I got. And and uh, so amazing. Any any last things that you guys want to share with the people out there this evening? All the families that are watching. Any? I, I want to start things? first. I just want to say I don't know anybody um, past this camera. I don't know you personally, but. Um, rest assured, I am praying for every single one of you. I, I blanket the whole Hawaiian Islands and beyond. Um, um, just praying for everyone, especially our children during these times, because, you know, they've had a different stress where they don't have friendships, they don't have social, you know, my, my grandkids are on computers, you know, trying to do their homework, and it's, it's, it's challenging for them, you know, and sometimes we think about the, you know, the food and the, and the money, and, but we're not really thinking about what they're going through, and they have their own stresses, so um, I offer a, a prayer this Christmas season for you and your family that you would once and for all find a peace and a peace in knowing that Jesus Christ, if you, you are anchored in him, you have everything. God bless. And, and I pray for all of the flam families as well as I echo my wife's um, uh, prayers and blessings onto you guys. You know, God is so good. You know, God is uh, the real season, the, the reason for the season of Christmas and uh, in this world that um, we're told that we cannot touch, that we cannot get next to each other, we cannot, you know, you need that. You need that, you know, that, that, that you know, that communion. You need that, you know, that gathering. And, and in these times, you know, um, you know, it's tough. But you know something, we're going to make it through. And the only way we're going to make it through, if we do it and we try to do it on our own, it, it's going to fail. You're going to fail into all kinds, you know, thoughts of suicide, uh, all kinds of these thoughts that people is going through during these times. It's, I've, I've been there. I, it's the Christmas blues, you know, uh, back in, you know, but you know something through Jesus, you know what I mean? And your, and your hope and your trust in him and the cleansing of his word every day, you know, um, will, will renew, um, that, that joy and that hope in your life. So that's our prayers for you guys and the families. You know, Kelly, boy, I, I realize how important the role of a father is. Yeah. And the impact that the man can make on his marriage and the ripple effect that it can have on his children. What's one thing that you want to share with the fathers and all the men that's watching this show out there tonight? You know, I always say that, you know, being a father is a tough job. For me, if I go and, if I go and lead my family, I'm going to fail. I failed because... You know, my, my, uh, you know, my role um, um, was to um, control my kids. You know, when you go in family of, of group members, you, you know, hey, they, they grow up. <laughs> they become adults. You cannot speak to them the way you used to speak to them before. You know, you cannot yell at them. You cannot insult them and tell them, hey, you're going to get lick it. You cannot, you cannot do that anymore. You know, so what I did, you know, as a dad is I, ga I gave it to my father. <laughs> So fathers, give it to your father. And guess what? He made them. He can fix them. He made the kids. He went, he, you know what I mean? You never make them. You, you, I mean, you, you know, you had a little part, but really God, you know what I mean, creates the kid. You know what I mean? And in his image, it's what the Bible says. So nowadays, instead of if I get one problem with my kids, I go to my father and I say, hey, Lord, I get one problem with them. Fix them. <laughs> my father-in-law you always used to say cheaper you go to god than you go and go make hoo-hoo with them you know so dads if you really want to know how to be one dad ask your dad in heaven you know i mean really you know pray to him 
you know, you cannot control it. He can. And, and that's what I do. I give it up to the Lord. Awesome. Good advice. <laughs> Would you put your hands together for Kelly Boy and Leo? Blow it up if you love that. If you're blessed here this Thanks evening. A lot, everybody. And if you don't know our Heavenly Father, if you don't know Jesus, we will give you an invitation to accept him this evening. So put your hands together. Blow it up if you're blessed by this testimony again. Thank you so much, Kelly Boy. Lord, Thank you, Leo. Love you, you guys. All Love right. You. Wow, amazing. Wasn't it an awesome time together? Put your hands together for the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what he can do in families. And let me ask you a question. Did 2020 bring out the worst in you, in your marriage, your family? Um, did it bring out the worst of your personal and generational issues like anger, control, maybe being out of control, insecurities. If so, Kelly Boy and Leo had shared the reason why they've been blessed this year in one of the worst years ever for this amazing family and group. Uh, things got shut down, but yet it's the best year. How in the world can that be possible? It's because of Jesus. And on a personal level, for Kelly Boy, dealing with the generational uh, issues of anger and control, 2020 was the year of breakthrough. I'll say it again. 2020 is a year of breakthrough for every single one of us. So what's the key? What's the key to having this kind of breakthroughs and miracles and healing. Leolani said, it's it, Kelly Boy's a brand new person, you know? And how is that so? It's because of him learning how to aloha on purpose. It's Kelly Boy learning how to keep his love on. So loving on purpose, that's the key. That is the key to having the best Christmas ever. It's learning how to keep your love on and not taking that for granted. This morning, I want to continue to talk about um, what we talked about last week, and that's learning how to be able to leave a legacy to help you, you, everyone watching here this morning, create a culture on purpose in your family. It's creating a culture on purpose in your family. Before we bring up the next slide, I want you to think about this. Imagine your children crossing the street and a bus full of people is barreling down the road, heading straight for your children, about to run them over and take them off this, this planet. But out of nowhere, a superhero arrives and jump in the front of that bus to stop that bus and to protect and save the lives of your children. Just imagine that. Now I wanna share you a PowerPoint, a picture, and I want to encourage all of you to take a picture of this next slide. Just imagine, like I said, your, your children crossing the street and that bus heading down the road to destroy them. That bus is your family history. It's Kelly Boy's family history of anger, abuse, control, and so forth. But Kelly Boy is the hero that jumped in front of that bus, took responsibility, and to save and change the course of his children. So why is this picture so important? Because your children are being affected by your family history, whether you like it or not, whether you believe it or not, whether you accept it or not, your children, are being harmed 
by your family history. All the hurts, all the habits, and all the hangups. But yet, you are the hero. You get to be the one that would jump in front of that bus to slow down and to stop it, to be able to create a culture on purpose to protect your children. From a biblical perspective, sorry, I, I like movies. I like I like pictures like these, and I I, I think, you know, uh, it's very prophetic. <laughs> But let me set a biblical foundation. This is the scenario of Malachi chapter 4. When the hearts of the parents do not connect to the children and the hearts of the children do not connect with the parents, there's a curse. There's disconnect. There's resentment. There's anger and so forth. Uh, a lot of issues, hurts, habits, and hang-ups. So I want to encourage you, leave a legacy. Christmas is about this. Jesus is Lord. I talked about it last week, but I want to hit it again because it's the repetition, repetition, rip, rip, repetitions that we need to be able to create culture on purpose. So leave a legacy. Jesus is Lord in your life. The Bible says the Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord has been born today in Bethlehem, the city of David. So Jesus is Lord. So I want to talk about some things. What does it mean when Jesus is Lord? You heard Kelly Boy and Leos de Lima. You heard the miracles. And these people have been serving in the church for years as worship leaders and, and, and so forth. But they were still stuck, still stuck. And, and their family and their marriage is getting demolished and destroyed because of the bus, the family history. But God is doing a new thing. Christmas is about a new thing. It's a savior coming to be able to be the Messiah, large and in charge in our life. So leave a legacy because Jesus is Lord in your life. The second thing I want to share with you, because Jesus Christ is Lord, that means you are a child of God. Romans chapter 8 says that. So you have not received a spirit that makes you fearful slaves. Instead, you have received God's spirit. People, Christmas is all about us receiving God's spirit. When he adopted us as his own children, now we call him Abba, Father. I want you, all of you right now, right now to say this says, I love you, Abba, Father. Yes, why can we say that? Because we are a child of God. Isn't that good? You're not an orphan. And why is that so important? A lot of us didn't have the best families. You know what I love about Kelly Boy? Rough upbringing, growing up on the West Side and all of that. But he's working today to leave a legacy. And, you know, he never, he loved his father, but his father wasn't the perfect father, but he's leaning on, he's leaning on and depending on his heavenly father to show him the way. So I want to encourage you folks, you folks may come from dysfunctional and even broken families, but you have a new family. You have a heavenly father, the perfect father that would never abandon you, never forsake you. He has an identity, a destiny, and a responsibility for you to leave a culture on purpose so that you can leave a legacy. The third thing I want to share with you this morning is this. You are a new creation in Christ Jesus. That's what happens when Jesus Christ is Lord. He makes all things new. The Bible says for uh, 2 Corinthians 5, 17, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, and that's the key, that's what Leolani and that's what Kelly Boy talked about. It's in Christ. It's not about just going to church. Like for them, they were going to church for years, but God is doing a new thing. They're a new creation. They're a new couple. They're new individuals. They're a brand new family. But the key is being in Christ Jesus, because that's what the Bible says. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ Jesus, he is, she is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, 
all things become new. That's the gospel. That's the good news. That's the promise. That's the power. And that's the presence of Jesus in all of us because we are a new creation. The next thing is this. Because of that, you're free from condemnation. Therefore, is there is now no condemnation, no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Because through Christ Jesus, the law of the Spirit who gives life has set you free. People of the Spirit of the Lord is, we are free, free, free in Christ Jesus. And we thank God for that. We thank God for the new things that he is doing in our life. We are free from condemnation. Another thing when Jesus Christ is Lord in your life is this. You are God's masterpiece. God doesn't make junk. We are not stupid. We are not dumb. We're not um, good for nothing. That's a lie from a pit of hell. So let's send the lies right back to where it came from, the gates of hell. The Bible teaches us in Psalm 139, thank you for making me so wonderfully complex. Your workmanship is marvelous. How well I know it. You know, one of the things that, that I learned from Ed Savoso, he taught in this scripture, he says, go home and look in the mirror and say, God, you did a marvelous job. <laughs> and I will encourage you to do the same thing. Look in the mirror, look in the mirror before makeup, before doing your hair, before brushing your teeth and say, God, you did a good job. I am your masterpiece. I want you to declare it because that's how you start to leave a legacy. It's a mind being renewed to the image and the likeness of God and his design based on his word and his spirit. Here's another thing. You are precious to God. All of you watching here this morning, you are precious to God. Psalm 139 verse 18 says this, how precious are your thoughts about me, O God? They cannot be numbered. God's thoughts about you it outnumbers the sand on the beaches, people. That's how much God loves you. That's what he thinks about you. And, and it starts with that. It starts with that mindset. It starts with that so we can continue to leave a legacy for generations yet to be born in our family. So I want to hit on a couple of things that, that we talked about last week, um, but Kelly Boyd and, and Lil nailed it this morning. We need a pillar of faith. The pillar of faith gives us the ability to pull heaven down, get filled up, and then direct ourselves at something. It's faith. The Bible teaches us it's impossible to please God without faith. So people, supersize your faith this Christmas season. And it's important for us to lead and be an example of faith and letting our kids see us cry out to the Lord. And that's one of the things that I've seen Kelly Boy and, and Leo as they share the testimony, um, being an example of, for the children and crying out to God. And I remember being there at the last taping, Allah on purpose. Yeah, he doing that right in front of his kids. And it, it's amazing. And it's, it's raw, it's real, but that's what Aloha on purpose is all about. That's what keeping your love on is all about, being authentic in the struggles that we have, but proclaiming that God has a way out. And don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to invite your kids in a process of believing. And that's what's happening with Kelly Boy and Delima. And that's why I wanted to bring them in this morning to share the testimony with all of us so that you will supersize your faith and, and you too will start to leave a legacy. And again, it's the vision. It's the vision. Um, it's a point in a distance that pulls us through the chaos. The Bible teaches us without vision, people perish. And here's one thing that we need to think about. Anger and control pass on from previous generations can continue to manifest if we don't break that with a new vision. And 
Kelly Boy said, we're gonna, we're gonna fall if we do it on our, on our, on our own. But we need help in Christ. I pray that Christ would help you give a prophetic vision for you and your family so that you can leave a legacy. And when we don't have a vision, then in hard moments, we will fall back into the old habits of punishment and fear because we're scared. And, and when we're scared, we hold on to the things that we trust the most. We hold on to things that we trust the most. And that's because we're all we know. So we got to be like Kelly Boy. We got to grab onto something new, something new, something fresh, something powerful, fresh tools so that you can be able to leave a legacy. That's why we need a vision. Kelly Boy and Leo has a new vision from God and they're not looking back. And I pray that you will not look back. And in closing, I wanted to uh, touch on this. We talked about it last week, but I wanted to hit it again because part of the vision is you having a culture creed. Part of the vision and part of the faith is you coming up with a with a code, a code of honor for your family. So with that said, what is the strength of your family? What is the passion of your family? And what are we going to do to be famous for? What will our family be famous for? That is, what is our legacy going to be? Because this is part of your identity. This is part of your destiny. This is part of your responsibility. And this is part of the vision that you need to do it on purpose. People, the days of winging it in a families are gone. That hasn't gotten our families anywhere. All that did is kept the bus coming full throttle down the road and destroying our children because we have not been the heroes to jump in front of that bus to stop it because we haven't defined the things that we're going to hold on to, the faith and the vision and knowing what our family will be known for. So what's the strength of your family? What's the passion of your family? And what is your family going to be famous for? What will your family's legacy be? Kelly Boyce, you're leaving a new legacy. Amazing. A new legacy. He's doing a new thing. You heard Carm and Joe. You heard from uh, Kualena. You heard from Powahi. You heard from Journey. They're breaking it. They're breaking it. They're being the heroes. People, we need to be the heroes right here right now never mind who's the next president never mind the next mayor never mind all of that all that matters right now to protect our children is for us to be the hero and define this vision the strength the passion and our legacy of our family see doing culture on purpose creates a strong culture and that's what we need people i want to challenge all of you Develop a strong culture, a culture on purpose that can withstand any struggle, any stress and anxiety and bring forth greatness. People, there's greatness in you. There's a hero in you that we need to pull out right now today. And that's why we wanted Kelly Boy to share with you guys this morning because we want to bring out that superhero in you. There is that superhero in you, and we're going to pull that out this morning. Because if not you, then who will save your children? If not you, then who will save your family? If not you, then who will save the people near and dear to your hearts? People, God can, but without you, he won't. And that's the miracle story. This Christmas is God wanting you to be the hero. Is God speaking to anyone out there today? If so, blow up, blow up Facebook right now. If God is speaking to you, blow it up. Let me see the hearts. Let me see the emojis. Blow it up. Let's come into agreement with the power of Christmas in each and one of us here this morning. Blow it up right now if God's speaking to you. So before we wrap up this morning, think about it. Think about it here and now. Do you have a vision? Do you have a vision for your marriage and your family? How do you keep the vision alive? 
How do you be that hero? Have you ever lost sight of the vision during painful or busy seasons of life? If so, how did you recover? How did you recover from it? I want to encourage you to talk this up this week in your small groups. And think about it. Think about this. Really think about it. Because everything that we will do moving forward from this day forward will be on purpose. What is the strength of your family? What is the passion of your family? And what are you, is your family going to be famous for? That is, what will your family's legacy be? And then so what, now what? If you did not do so already, I want to encourage all of you, sit down with your family and write out your culture creed. Start by asking three questions and discuss them together and write down your answers. So here's the deal, the activation. Make each answer a simple sentence that you can easily remember. A print or write it out, find a regular time to review it. Review it, post it in a place that you will see it daily and declare it first thing in the morning and the last thing before you go to sleep. The strength of our family is, the passion of our family is, our family's legacy will be, that's the challenge for you because that's the vision. That's the vision of you being a superhero, jumping in front of the bus, stopping your family's history from destroying your children's future. Let me share with you, I've been, I've been praying about this. I haven't talked to my children, my family yet, but I've been praying and I've been, just asking the Lord to help me to see what does he see in our family and based on our our family's culture and our experiences this is the culture creed for the Cardenas Ohana it's just a rough draft something I, I I came up with that I wanted to lead by example it's not by any means the final draft but it is is a draft it is a vision for me being a hero for my children and my family so the strength of our family is unconditional love acceptance and forgiveness when that isn't there, our family will get weak and fall apart. So that's the strength. And that's the prophetic word that I'm, I'm, I'm speaking into it because that's the key in the strength of any family and organization. The strength of our family is unconditional love, acceptance, and forgiveness. And keep in mind, I'm not looking at my family's future and legacy from the lens of the past. Because Jesus is Lord, he's doing a new thing. There's no condemnation. I'm holding on to promises of God. And I'm creating a new culture. I'm creating a new legacy. I'm not looking back. I am looking forward. Just like Kelly Boy, I am doing a new thing. So moving forward, the strength of our family is unconditional love, acceptance, and forgiveness. The passion of our family is loving, helping, strengthening people and families. Our family's legacy for generations yet to be born is to live aloha, love aloha, and share aloha, the true spirit of aloha. Not the commercialized aloha, not the aloha that they take out the cross and they take out the Jesus and all of that. That is false. That is twisted. That is distorted. That is not the truth. That is not the way. That is not the life. I'm talking about my family's legacy is living aloha, loving aloha, and sharing the true spirit of aloha and making the world a better place. So I've yet to send that out to my family, but I'm prophetic. I'm apostolic. I'm just uh, being that apostle for my family at this point in time. But that's a draft. That's something that I'm going to uh, work on with my family. But that's a vision that's better than the last generation with all the hurts, habits, and hang up. In closing, I want to go back to the picture that we started with. Your family history. Destroying 
your children. And you being the hero. All of you, God is calling all of you to be a hero. And, and some of you may have come from good families, but yet maybe there's, there's small little things, um, unhealthy things, maybe not as major as some of us. But the point is to make the next generation to do it better. That, that's a whole goal to make the next generation, lift them up and elevate, to honor them, to do it better in our generation and the last generation. And that's the key, is us being a hero, to leave a legacy, to create a culture in our families that will aloha on purpose in such a way that out of that, out of our families, out of this church, we can go out there and change the world, but it starts with our family. How many of you have been blessed here this morning? If so, let me see that. Let me see the emojis if you've been blessed. With that said, I wanna pray for all of you this morning. Father, we thank you, Lord God, for this inspiring morning. We thank you, Lord God, that, that you're Lord in our life. And, and because of that, we are your children. We're not orphans. We have been adopted into your family. And because of that, there's no condemnation for those who belong to Christ Jesus. We thank you for the promises that you shared, one of which is we are a new creation. You're doing a new thing that moving forward, it's about the future, not so much about the past. We honor the past. But we want to ex extract all that which is good in God out of that to pass it on to the next generation, to the next generation and generations of our family members that are yet to be born. And Lord God, because of that, you, we are your masterpiece, fearfully and wonderfully made. We are precious in your sight. We pray that you continue to fill us with the word of God the spirit of God, so we can be a people of God and a family of God. And out of that, supersize our faith. Enlarge our vision. Help us to dream big. And Lord God, help us no longer to do family on purpose. Our family, uh, no wing it, winging it as a family, but help us to do family on purpose. Help us to be intentional. Help us to create a family code, a, a, a creed in which the culture of honor will continue to be per perpetuated daily. So show us, show us, Lord God, prophetically, prophetically, the strength of our families. Show us, Lord God, the God-given passion that you have given to us and our families. And Lord God, help us to define, to to have a vision of what our family will be known for and what will our family legacy be moving forward. Not looking backwards, not moving backwards, but moving forward in such a way that we will continue to give you glory, honor, and praise moving forward into the greatest Christmas ever. And beyond. So Lord God, we pray that you give all of us clarity to start working on it because faith without works is dead. So give us clarity to, to put it down on paper, our culture creed, uh, and not only to formulate the culture creed, but to live it out with power and consistency in partnership with you. So Father, we pray all these things in Jesus' name and God's people said, amen. Hey, I got one more prayer before we wrap up. If, if there's anyone out there that don't know Jesus Christ as Lord, you don't know God as Father, or maybe 
maybe this year things hasn't been happening the way you wanted to. Maybe you've been going to church, just like Kelly Boy. You're going to church, serving in ministry, but nothing happening. And maybe you want to rededicate your life to the Lord. I want to give you the invitation. I want to. So if that's you, you want to give your heart to the Lord or you want to rededicate your life this morning because God is doing a new thing and want to bring up the here in you. If that's you, I want you to repeat after me. Father God, thank you for this morning. I love the stories. I love the music. I love the word. I love the teaching this morning. I got it. But one thing I'm missing is you in the center of my heart and my life. Things seem out of order because of that. I ask for your forgiveness. And this morning, I accept you into my life. I believe that you're the son of God. I confess that I'm a sinner in need of a savior. Save me this morning. Do a new thing in my life. Be the center of my life so that things will be in order with you and your kingdom. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for taking your rightful place in my heart and my family. I thank you for your mercy. I thank you for your grace. I thank you for Jesus. And I pray all these things in your holy name, amen. Hey, if you pray that prayer, would you just, says, I dedicated my life to Jesus. Give Just give us a thumbs up. We wanna celebrate that because that's one of the most important decisions that you can make in your life. So God bless you. So moving forward, I wanna encourage you guys to get connected, stay connected. It's all about the connection. And also want to share with you guys, we still got some things moving forward this week. We got Christmas in the Valley. It is still on at this point in time. Christmas in the Valley, uh, decorating the vehicles. It is uh, uh, this week, Saturday, 3 o'clock, we start decorating. Uh, to about 4.45, the convoy will leave to spread the Christmas spirit in the valley at 5 o'clock. So people, come on. Let's get ready for Christmas in the valley. The other thing I want to share with all of you uh, this morning is this. The greatest Christmas ever will be this Wednesday again. We will be talking about hope for your finances. And we're going to have a powerful time of music, comedy by the brothers, uh, and a powerful testimony of God's miracles in regards to the finances from Sam Kapoor III. So I want to encourage all of you guys, let's be super spreaders and social disruptors. Remember, the world is never made right by the gospel you don't share. I will say it again. The world is never made right by the gospel you don't share. Lost people are never saved unless we spread the good news. And people are never healed unless we spread the good news. So I want to encourage you, spread it. Spread it out this week. Get it out there. Go to To Hawaii, uh, our Facebook page. Got the information there. Be super spreaders. Spread the good. You know, you know, if we don't do that, then what are we doing? If we're not sharing the gospel, especially during Christmas, what are we doing? Come on, people. Let's be filled with favor and flavor. Go out there and be super spreaders. Get the word out. Join us for the greatest Christmas ever this Wednesday at 6 o'clock. People, we love you. Thanks for joining us. Until we meet again, malama pono ahui ho. God bless and aloha. Love y'all. My Ohana, the musical family of Kapena. And uh, we are blessed to be with you on this beautiful Mele Kalikimaka celebration. And we're going to open up with a lovely song right up here. Let's do this, Kalena. Mm -hmm.